Did you know that we are given three to seven days of bereavement leave, and in the U.S., it's not required to be paid leave? Now, after the first month, most of the extra help and support is dwindling because people are getting back to their lives with the expectation that you are as well. The problem is that you don't have your life to get back to. In this episode, I'll share how to resist the secondhand stress of society and harder still, the firsthand stress you put on yourself to be better quickly. Learn how this microwave mentality of grief is harmful to you and how to give yourself the same grace, in this case, grief grace, that you would effortlessly give to others. Hey friend, welcome to the Grief to Great Day podcast. Do you feel like you're going crazy? Is the shower the only place for you to really cry? Are you surrounded by people, but you still feel all alone? Do you want to be the you you were before your loved one died, but you have no idea how to get there? I'm Steph Cabanis, Southern by choice, wife, turtle triathlete, Jesus follower, and fellow traveler in the journey of grief. I too struggled to breathe, questioned God and my faith, and thought I would never be happy again. But God took my brokenness and he turned it into a breakthrough. So if you're ready to understand how to navigate grief, lean into your faith and take just one step towards healing, then bring your ugly cry, get into a comfortable place, even if that's your bed right now, and let the healing begin. Girl, there's hope for your future. Come on in the house and join me on that couch. I'm Steph, and this is Grief to Great Day. Thank you for being here. I hope you feel welcomed and heard through this podcast. I also want to give a shout out to South Africa. As they're listening to this podcast there, and as far as the U.S., Georgia has taken over as the state with the most downloads. It was Texas for a long time, but now Georgia has moved into the top spot. I share these for fun, but also as tangible reminders of the need for Christian grief support and the fact that you are not alone. If this podcast helps you, please share it with your church or anyone who's going through this difficult season of grief. Today, we're going to talk about what I'm calling the microwave mentality of grief and why this perspective is harmful to you. Depending on your age, you remember how meals were prepared back in the day, And the stark contrast of time spent preparing and eating the meal to today's meals that are popped in the microwave for ease and speed. Did you know that the average length of bereavement leave in the U.S. is three to seven days? And in other countries, it's about the same, with some offering paid leave for that time. Now, we all know that a few days is hardly enough time to even plan the funeral. Compare that to the 20 days of leave that grief experts recommend. The facts of grief are that the physical effects alone can literally make a person sick, that the cognitive bogginess of grief takes several months, that a person's identity is changed after loss, and that the overwhelm of grief can make getting out of bed a full day's challenge. Now that's before we even get to the emotions and the cultural pressure not to show those emotions. So is it any wonder that after the first month, we as a society have an expectation for the bereaved to be back to normal. We collectively have forgotten that we individually will never get back to that normal again. We can create a new normal, but it doesn't happen overnight or even in one month. The first thing you need to do is turn off the noise around you. After that magic month of all the support from people, they have to return to their lives. And there's nothing really wrong with that, but you don't have a life to return to. This is one of those gut punches of your new reality and makes you feel an aloneness and a pressure to be better. Based on what you've experienced, if someone asked you how long grief should take, how would you answer? I stayed frustrated with myself and my lack of progress while I clearly gave others I talked with double and triple the time I gave myself. I didn't realize it until a sweet nurse practitioner friend of mine heard me, (laughs) and she said, Steph, why are you not giving yourself the same grace you give others? I didn't know the answer. I still don't know the answer, but I think we're all a little bit like that. So it's time you give yourself some grief grace. That's the grace you would freely give 
to anyone else. You should also know by listening to a few of these episodes that grief is always worse than you expected. It lasts longer than you want it and makes you feel like you'll never be happy again. If I asked you to describe what losing your loved one has meant and you are completely honest, wouldn't you tell me how every part of your day is ridiculously hard? Would you say that beyond the loss you had no idea it would be like this? How you can no longer just pick up the phone and call them, even if you have tried to do this. How you are now expected to do the things you shouldn't have to do, and how the future you envision for yourself will never be. Maybe your income is affected, or you no longer have your go-to person. These are big things, my friend. Why is it that you should be through in six months? Losing a loved one is life-altering, and just the acceptance, true acceptance, takes longer than six months. In six months, the layers of grief are lifting and the depth of loss is being realized. Sometimes the pressure from others to be better can come in the form of wanting you to attend gatherings or church functions or the expectation that you are going about normal life in just a few short months. If you're invited to go to a birthday party or a social gathering or do something with friends, remember you're allowed to say no. Listen to the podcast episode on people-pleasing for more on this. And before I go further, let me share a distinction between grief and loss. Grief is what you are dealing with because of your loss. The pain, the overwhelm of grief will not always be what it is today. And with time and your participation, it will get better. Now, your loss today will be the same 10 years from now because your loved one will still not be here. So when I say getting through grief, I'm speaking only to this hard journey of pain, of acceptance, and of rebuilding life. So I'm going to ask you to resist the pressure, the secondhand stress that others put on you and put one foot in front of the other. The worst of grief won't last forever, but you also won't be through it in six months. And let's shift this a little bit. Resisting the pressure from others may be frustrating, but what is actually harder doesn't come from the outside. When is the last time you said, when will this end? Or why am I not better? Or from my personal list, I want my life back. See, the greatest pressure on you to be better is from you wanting to be back to normal. There is no microwave for grief. It's back to the crock pot. Your life doesn't have the encouraging or dramatic music that people in the movies do. But don't minimize your everyday actions of getting out of bed, taking a shower, of getting out of the house, or bigger yet, going to the grocery store. I know some of you are struggling with going to church, and I did too. But that struggle and the emotional meltdowns, they don't mean that you're failing at getting through this. There's just no fast and easy with grief. If I could have gotten hold of that one thing, it would have helped me tremendously. I wouldn't have fought against this arbitrary schedule I put myself on. I would have felt less like a failure, less weak, less crazy. And I compared my grief self to my old self before the grief. So I failed all day long. You're in a place you didn't ask for or want but there is no possible way for you to be the old you in this new place. So don't put your energy into trying. Don't compare yourself with those who aren't going through grief with that resentment or asking why you and not them. And don't compare yourself with how you think others handle loss. This journey is unique to you. When you start putting pressure on yourself or you fall for the comparison trap, Those feelings take you down a road where you keep piling any and all things negative on top of it. Next thing you know, you've landed yourself in the pit of grief and in the pit of pitying yourself. So do you have a right to have a pity party? Absolutely yes, but it does also delay your healing. Once I started down the road of feeling like a grief failure, I added all the pain that Monica endured. I put myself right back there. The fact that she couldn't breathe, 
yet she still had a burden to share God's goodness. And that led me to being angry with God (laughs) for allowing such a thing. And that anger took me back to decades of what else God had allowed in my life. And before I knew it, I could hardly breathe because I doomed my future to be the same. I used to ask God if the loss wasn't enough and was angry that he, the God of the universe, who was completely capable of, didn't take my debilitating pain away so I could function. What I learned, though, was that God was concerned more with what I needed than what I wanted. In grief, there's a process that's being worked in you, and God's pruning is never comfortable. In the end, it is his perspective, his work in you that matters. Not to sound unspiritual, but sometimes in our pain, we don't care about how God is growing us. Look, give yourself permission to feel what you feel. Draw close to God and allow him to give you purpose and a future you're going to thrive in. Your level of appreciation, your gratitude, the depth of love and kindness and character, they may pale in comparison to just having your loved one back. But these things will bring you a future beyond just survival. So until you get glimpses of the possibility of having a meaningful life, trust me, once the poster child for grief failures, (laughs) that God will do an incredible work in you for you, and for his kingdom, because he did for me, and God is no respecter of persons. So I need you to think of grief in terms of crockpot versus microwave. How do you give up the microwave mentality? Well, with your journey works, of course. (laughs) All right, so your journey works for this week are three, four things. Number one, don't allow the cultural norms to dictate how you are doing. Surrender your grief expectations, your hard days, and your future to God. Allow yourself some grief grace and don't beat yourself up. Don't qualify or quantify what you're going through as slow or fast or good or bad. It is all of those things and it is none of those things. If you start feeling like you're heading down that road toward the pit, interrupt what you're thinking quickly. Get up change your scenery, go for a walk, do something to get yourself off that road. It's not going to help. Spend time in Romans 12. Our word of the week is from Romans 12, 1 through 2. It's in the message version. And this is what Paul is saying. Here's what I want you to do. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You're going to be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you. That's some good stuff. If you need more personalized help, I have a few spots available for grief coaching. So go to grief to great day, grief, the number two great day.com to set up individual grief coaching. If you don't know what you need or what to do next, and it doesn't matter where you are in the grief process, I can help you navigate the next steps. If you want to be among others who understand the pain of grief, and desire to move forward with God at the center, then join us in the Grief Group for Christian Women Facebook community. Yes, it's literally called the Grief Group for Christian Women. If you don't have a church home, please visit my church, opendoorchurch.com. Links to both the private Facebook group and Open Door Church are in the show notes. In the meantime, remember who holds your future and keep on coming back to the house, keep sitting on the couch, And keep taking those steps, however small, however slow, towards your healing. Thank you for being here today, for showing up. If this podcast has given you hope, encouragement, or helped you in any way, share it with a friend, either in a text or on your social platforms. Also, please subscribe, rate, and leave a written review on iTunes. 
it's a huge blessing for me to know that you're out there. Lastly, and this is important, you are not alone. Connect with me on the Grief to Great Day website, the link is below, and sign up for our free newsletters. I want to be able to pray for you by name. Remember, grief isn't something you're going to get over, but a great day is something you can get to.